Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Brandon Lester Fishing. We are finally back. I know it's been a few days uh, since I dropped a video. Been a little over a week actually, but actually been under the weather a little bit. I've had a upper respiratory sinus deal going on. Just felt like crap all week. So um, finally back out here. Glad to be back. It's going to be kind of a rough day. You probably can't tell it looking out there at the lake, but the wind's blowing 15 to 25, probably gust to 30 right now. You can look at the boat ramp right here behind me. I'm the only one in the parking lot. So <laughs> that'll tell you what, and it's the weekend. So that'll tell you what kind of day it is. But I've always been the kind of guy and that's how I wanted to theme this video. If I get ready to go fishing, I'm going. I don't care what the weather's doing. It doesn't matter. I'm going fishing. So that's just the kind of guy I am. We're gonna talk about fishing in adverse conditions, windy conditions, and we're gonna catch some crappie. That's just what we do. So y'all stay tuned. There he is. We got him. Yep, it's too windy to catch him today. We should have just stayed at the house. <laughs> Not. Golly, that's a good one too. Mm, 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 mm. What a fish. Look at that big old black nose. God. That is awesome. Golly, that's a pretty one. Probably pound three quarter fish to start the morning. Thank you, buddy. I may keep a few today. I don't know. I may keep seven or eight, but we'll throw that one back and we'll talk about my setup here a little bit. What I like to look for on these windy days, what I'm fishing, all that good stuff. There's a pretty good wad of them there, and I'm actually throwing, y'all saw this a couple videos ago, I'm throwing that itty bitty slab hunter on a 132nd head. I've got a size number seven split shot right up above it. <clears throat> I got number four, or I've got four pound, excuse me, I got four pound vicious panfish monofilament line, uh, straight four pound vicious mono, a 2500 size reel, and a six foot medium light action rod. That's all I'm using, nothing real, real special. I think I could catch these fish on a lot of different baits right now. And I, that's kind of one of the things that I want to get into when we talk about fishing on these these uh more windy days because you can look at it as an advantage or you can look at it as a disadvantage right now i got fish looking at my bait so y'all hang on just a second come on golly i thought he was gonna eat it so on these what you need to realize is on these real windy days it actually, yeah, I know it's, it makes it a more li little more difficult to fish whatever you're trying to fish. And it's, it's not ideal. And a lot of it's relative to the lake that you're on too. See here in Tennessee, we're kind of blessed that we have lakes. You know, we're, we're kind of in the rolling hills. We got a lot of hills and hollers as we call them around here. It's kind of like peaks and valleys or, Wherever you're from, you know, you may call it something different, but what I've got right here out there on the main lake, you know, obviously it's blowing 30 miles an hour out there. I don't want to get right out in the brunt of it and, and try to fish. That's not where I'm going to try to fish. Um, so I'm over here on the protected side of the lake and that's where I'm going to start my search. And that's where it really pays. Um, it really pays big dividends to really know your lake well on days like today. Because if I only knew one or two spots on this lake and uh, and they were out in that wind, well, where am I gonna fish? You know, so that's where it really pays to either know, it pays to either know your lake well or know how to find new places. And don't be afraid to go hunt for new places. And we may, may, we may have to do some of that today, but I'm not gonna stay at home and I've never been a guy that is ever gonna stay at home just because of a little bit of adverse weather. About the only thing that will drive me off the water, one thing that'll drive me off the water or make me go find some cover somewhere is lightning. 
I don't like fishing in lightning, but anything else, I'm pretty much game. Hey, and real quick guys, remember this video is brought to you by Midway USA. A lot of you guys are probably familiar with Midway USA made their name in the shooting supplies hunting supplies stuff like that well they've jumped in full force to the fishing side of things the past couple of years and a, particularly for the crappie angler man they've got all the good crappie stuff the bobby garland the crappie magnet all the jinko crappie stuff the acc crappie stick stuff they've got all that stuff so um you know as well as my mustad signature series rods they've got a ton of bass fishing baits so be sure and check those guys out they've been a big supporter of me this past year looking forward to the next year with them for sure uh, and hopefully many years to come but um want to thank them guys for uh for sponsoring this video and just wanted to throw that in there but check them out midwayusa.com There he is. Come up out of there and smoked it, man. He could not stand it. <clears throat> Tell you what, that is another nice one. We may keep us about seven or eight today. Take them home and fillet them. I hadn't kept any in two or three weeks. That's a perfect candidate to keep too, about a 12 incher, nice and fat. Throw that one in the box. Y'all see me throw a lot of them back, but there's certainly nothing wrong with keeping a few to eat either. I, I eat my fair share of them and they're really good. My wife and I both, we love them. Cook them a few different ways. And I, I've been meaning to do a, a catch, clean, catch clean and cook on this channel, so. We need to do that here pretty soon. I got a couple of different recipes that I'd like to share with y'all. You know, probably the most important thing to remember when you're crappie fishing, you gotta be able to fill your jig. You gotta be able to know what's going on at the end of that line at all times. Um, so one thing that you have to do when it's more windy outside is sometimes you have to use a heavier jig. It's just part of it. And I've always kind of been the kind of guy that likes to use as as light a jig as i can get by with and active target has ac actually i've started using a lot heavier jigs than i used to i used to be a 132nd ounce guy just about all the time now i find myself using a 116th and even a 1 8 ounce a good bit uh either that or i'll use this 132nd ounce and put a split shot on it just to get it on down there but um the point I was trying to make is when, when the wind's blowing, just use a jig that you can feel. You know, even if you have to go up to say a 3 16 or a, a quarter ounce jig, use one that you can feel because it's very important to be able to feel what's going on and, and what that jig is doing at all times. I see I've caught a couple of these fish right here on this little itty bitty jig and it, there's a pretty good bit of color in this water. We have had a little bit of rain uh, in the last couple of weeks since I've been on this lake. So I'm going to try a little bit brighter color right here. And this is a different jig altogether. This is a, uh, this is a 1 16th ounce head with a crappie magnet, purple and chartreuse. I'm not exactly sure if we catch a couple on it, I'll look at the name of that color. Uh, but I've actually been catching some fish on that color and I kind of like it. <coughs> we'll throw it down there and see what they'll do with it. <clears throat> took that 1 16th ounce head and I put me a split shot in front of it so I could feel it real good another nice black nose ok 
had it down there in a treetop. Those fish were sitting so tight in that brush pile, I really couldn't even see the fish on active target, but I felt like there were some in there, so I just got it down there and kind of hovered it over the top of that pile, and sure enough, one came out and got it. I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest with y'all. That fish had been riding on that thing for a minute. I didn't even know he was out there. I was reeling in to make another cast. That's what I get for not watching my line and watching the active target. I'm trying to get these fish lined out. I just found this spot. That's a perfect belaying size right there, about a 11 inch probably. That didn't snuck up on me. That don't happen very often, but. <clears throat> it does from time to time there's one little rock sticking out off of this buffy bank right here that these fish are kind of sitting on now there's a school of crappie way out there in the middle of nowhere just hanging out those are the ones that really interest me Big old school of crappie out here. Just hanging out in the middle of nowhere. Now see, without active target, I never ever catch that fish. It's 40 feet deep right here. Look at all those crappie. Look at that big school. They're just hanging out. They ain't doing nothing. They're just out here looking for them a ball of bait. That's wild. Wild but cool. Very nomadic too, see, I mean, everybody, we've always thought, me included, we've always thought of crappie as a fish that sits in a brush pile, don't move around much. Not always the case, guys. It's just not always the case. I mean, they get out, run around and chase bait, just like bass and other fish do. There he is. That one knocked the fire out of it there now. <clears throat> That's another one out of that same school. Now, all they did, they were way out in there in 40 feet. They came right over here and got right on a rock. When they got set up, I got me one of them. That's a good fish, too. I still think we can flip him. Yeah. Oh, them little bitty jig heads. They've got little bitty hooks, but... When you get one stuck on that little bitty hook, I mean, he ain't coming off. You got him. What a pretty one. Working on us a good little mess of fish in there now. All right, let's see where they, there they are. Now see, they're back out there swimming around now. Breaks up that water. They're not as doesn't take as much to fool them. We'll just leave it at that. I mean, there's a there's a lot of guys. When I woke up this morning, I knew I was going fishing today. I woke up and I heard that wind is blowing outside my house. So, well, I know what the theme of today's video is going to be. Fish are biting, they don't care. I can promise you, I've caught fish in a whole lot worse conditions than this. There's another one. I've caught them in wind, I've caught them in rain, lightning, thunder, tornadoes coming. <clears throat> I 
These are not giants, but they are darn good fish. They are sure enough getting fat too. Another dang good keeper. I hadn't been out on this lake in a couple of weeks and I'm amazed at how much girth these fish have put on in the two weeks that I haven't been out here. I mean, they, they're getting pudgy now. And I'll tell you why, it's because we've had some good cold weather finally. Um, we've had some nights in the 20s, low 20s even. Water temperature is down to 58, 58.1, so. They know winter time is here. There it is. That's a crappy dump. Fighting today, gosh, that's a fat one. Man, that's the only one looks like he ought to look in March right before they get ready to spawn. These fish have really been doing some feeding. Look how fat he is. I mean, that song got is blowed up. He ate too much for Thanksgiving. That's what he did. By the way, happy Thanksgiving to all you guys. I hope you had a good one. <clears throat> Man, there's a bunch of crappie in that pot. All right, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed that little episode. You know, fishing in high wind, there really is no uh, secrets. Um, it's kind of used common sense, but you'd be surprised how many guys I see struggle bass fishing, crappie fishing in wind like this. And you got to learn to use it to your advantage. Try not to fight it. You know, if you're trying to fish a brush pile, don't try to set up wind of it. If you do, fish off the back deck of the boat. But the best way to do it is get downwind of that brush pile let your boat position and just sit there and fish, you know, and don't try to fish right out in the brunt of that wind. Try to find you a little place that's a little bit protected. Even if you're on a flatter lake, get behind a bridge causeway or something like that. Something that'll block a little bit, a little bit of that wind. Um, and at the end of the day, man, hey, in my opinion, this is a whole lot better than sitting on the uh, sitting on the couch on the weekend watching football. So that's just my opinion, but I love it out here I love catching these crappie and uh, I like taking you guys along with me But hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. I hope you're catching a bunch of fish I'd love to hear about it. Drop me a comment. Be sure and hit that subscribe button We still got a whole bunch of people that aren't subscribed So that helps the channel grow not not just for me, but for everybody involved I want everybody to just learn from this channel and uh, just enjoy the sport of fishing, man. That's what it's all about. But appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you real soon right here. Brandon Lester Fishing.